the jihadist imperative also manifests itself through the halal industry. This is reflected in the words of Mustafa Serik, the Grand Mufti of Bosnia, who has openly stated that Muslims should conquer the world through the halal movement. In Ireland, the halal industry is overseen by the self-styled Department of Halal Certification, chaired by Umar al-Qadri. To be awarded halal certification, businesses must apply to the department and successfully complete a series of audits. Naturally, the application fee and all subsequent monies are used to further the advancement of Islam. Halal butchers operate with impunity throughout Ireland. This is a national disgrace, for the brutality of halal slaughter is well known. Indeed, the practice has been banned in Denmark and other European countries with a strong concern for animal welfare. In order for meat to be classified as halal, the animal must be slaughtered by a sane adult Muslim in the name of Allah. Otherwise, the meat is impure. Knowing that non-Muslims won't accept this supremacist logic, the apologist for Islam tries to argue that halal is actually about minimizing suffering. However, a cursory glance at the process shows this to be false. The animal has its throat slit and bleeds out until it dies. Nothing is done to minimize pain. The jihadist imperative can also be seen in the demands of Muslim parents for public schools to close on Islamic holidays and for the establishment of their own schools to keep their children from learning about other religions. Here in Ireland, the latter function is performed by the Muslim National School, located on the same site as the Klonsky Mosque. The Muslim National School indoctrinates children of Muslim parents with all manner of wicked ideas. I should know, as I attended the school for eight years. While there, I was warned not to take Christians or Jews as my friends, for the Qur'an says that they are friends only unto themselves. I was also warned not to neglect my prayers, or Satan would pour boiling water over my head. Like other primary schools in the country, the Muslim National School teaches the Irish curriculum for the natural sciences and the humanities. This is a condition which must be met for the school to be recognized and funded by the Department of Education. However, the teaching of religion is left entirely to the school administration without any interference from the department. Thus, the Muslim teachers are free to teach whatever they want, some of whom are in bed with the far left. This is a picture of Asiya Altawash, now chairperson of the Muslim Primary Education Board, being hosted in August 2008 by the Socialist Workers' Party, who support Hezbollah and other jihadist groups. In the UK, it's the same story. Islamic schools teach the national curriculum, but have free reign when it comes to religious instruction. Unsurprisingly, many of these schools have been found to be promoting jihadist values. Indeed, some of these schools use textbooks supplied by Saudi Arabia which instruct students on how to amputate the hands and feet of thieves with chilling precision. These books also promote belief in a global Jewish conspiracy and teach that Christianity is an invalid and perverted religion. From Canada to Australia, Muslim schools are using taxpayers' money to indoctrinate children with barbaric ideas. Take a look at this video. But he's Muslim and he gets out of Islam. He doesn't want any more. What are we going to do? Kick him. 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 You understand? We're talking about Islam. For the head, had the zina, what is the law of this? Until he died. And the one who is not married, he never died. Now, we. 100 uh, if someone make them seem like a, a man, a woman like a man. You understand this? The punishment is kill. Kill them from the highest uh, place. And not going to be like animals, living like animals. Or to be like the people of Lut. We have to take the head. The head is to kill them. The punishment of Ilam Qawm Lut, throw them from the highest point. 
then we reduced him to the lowest of the low. So if you throw some up amounts and you are reducing him to the lowest of the low because they're falling off from a high thing. It's not enough that you worship Allah, you have to also uh, in our heart uh, uh, hate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala please to Allah and love what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hate what this peace to Allah, especially when living with this country that's non-Muslim. Verily, we are free from you and whatever you worship besides Allah, we have rejected you and there has appeared between us and you hostility and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone. You understand, sister, Islam is the tabarruh and the shirk. The shirk wa ahli, the people who do the shirk. Any questions? To be good, good friend, uh, give them all about our secret, you know. You understand? But you have to be fair with them. That is not allowed. Because the wala is only to Muslim, not to the Kafir. And, uh, and the message, the Quran, came to confirm the truth in the previous scriptures. And we feel nothing sometimes going past the church. What they say with their tongues is so vile and disgusting. It's an abomination. Not content with establishing their own schools, jihadists have infiltrated Christian schools in Ireland. In 2006, an RTE primetime documentary revealed that Ismail Kotwal, imam of the Black Pits Mosque, who has described the Taliban as a model for the rest of the world, had been employed by De La Salle College Churchtown to teach Islam. I remember this vividly as a student of the college at the time. In the documentary, we learn that during these classes, Kotwal referred to Osama bin Laden as a great leader, causing two Shia students to walk out in anger. Kotwal would subsequently accuse Ortee of evil intentions and twisting his words. However, during the program, Kotwal openly praises bin Laden as a God-fearing man. The Taliban did a good job, but of course they had some weaknesses. They needed support. They needed time. And it was very sad that they, didn't, they did not get that support. But still, it was a model for the rest of the world. Do you think that there could be any good reason why the Taliban should have handed over Osama bin Laden to America? No, of course not. Why? Show some proof, show some evidence. Yes, of course, take him. We'll punish him as well. But without proof, why? You really, really be believe that there is no hard evidence to show that Osama bin Laden was behind 9-11? Yes. No evidence at all. There's no evidence. How have you tried to explain this to, to your own students when they, they say, well, listen, that guy is, is a terrorist? No, my students don't say that. My students don't say he's a terrorist. But surely they would have read and thought that he... No, no because they know, they know that when we, we teach a very balanced thing and we put all the pros and cons, at the same time we put this, that they say this, but can we trust them what they are saying? Osama bin Laden, look at him, his appearance is like Prophet Muhammad. You can see it in his face, he's, an, he's a good God-fearing man. What you say to your students is that Osama bin Laden, he is in the same mold. The best, I be very close. We have been told in the Quran that Prophet Muhammad's life is the best life, the best example. Whoever is closest to him is, is a better person. And these people, Mullah Umar, Osama bin Laden, have shown it practically. You say that he's essentially a decent man and that there is no proof etc. People still, they find, they find that extremely difficult to understand. Who, who finds it difficult? I think, I think people will. No, Muslims don't. Non-Muslims well. Who cares? I don't ac accept them to understand. Muslims will take this message. When I say to them, Osama bin Laden or Mullah Omar or, or anybody else, what good is inside them is good. The jihadist imperative also manifests itself through Islamic charities, many of which have been found to support terrorism. Indeed, we must understand that when groups like Muslim Sisters of Era offer help to the homeless, what they are really trying to do is to win people over to Islam. 
The Taliban do the exact same thing in Afghanistan. To win sympathy for their cause, they are often the first to assist victims of earthquakes. This is how Islam sustains itself, by preying on the most vulnerable, by making them feel part of a community. These people have no concept of genuine morality, of doing good for goodness sake. All they care about is that sweet heavenly reward for bringing people to Islam. A further manifestation of the jihadist imperative can be seen in the construction of mosques with enormous minarets, explicitly designed to announce the adhan over loudspeakers. Indeed, it is important to realize that the adhan is more than just a call to prayer. It is a supremacist declaration that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his prophet. Having the adhan blare out over loudspeakers especially in a majority non-Muslim country, is unquestionably a form of coercion. Recognizing this, a group of residents in Lucan have taken a stand against the proposed mosque in the area, which of course will include a minaret on its premises. The mosque's backers claim that they have no intention of using the minaret to announce the Adhan. This is a barefaced lie, for why build the minaret at all then? The truth is that they absolutely intend to use it once the Muslim population in Lucan is large enough to quell any opposition. This is the tried and tested strategy for Muslims to get what they want. They have been given permission to do so by Dublin City Council who, in their willful ignorance of the imperial nature of Islam, have actually likened the Adhan to church bells. In Toronto, the capitulation of local authorities to Islam means that non-Muslims must endure this noise pollution five times a day. Take a look at this video. Subhanallah. Hey!